The part of this project that I wanted to show was the objects bringing the story of ancient African culture alive and the artistry, the skill sets, the civilizations before Europeans descent over there. I saw an advertisement. It shot at me, I just thought, yes. Because I've never done anything like that before. And I just wanted to know a bit more about my culture. And this gave me an opportunity to do something I wasn't used to doing, and something new. History, yeah, and African culture has always been an interest of mine. And as a teacher, it, it's nice to be at the beginning of something, <laughs> rather than the end of it. To be able to see... Um the artefacts that have never been seen before, the African artefacts that haven't been seen before. There's a massive gap at the moment between black community and museums. And a lot of the time the information that is given around uh, artefacts of African origin are either very, very limited or very nondescript. My perception of African culture is that most of what Europeans have comes from Africa. And that, you know, they learn to read and write. They learn to use toilets, all these things from the interaction with people from the from the Eastern world. Well, I think we had a whole over a meeting about what the project is about and what we're going to actually do. And part of it was going to uh, visit, I think, it was four to six museums and see what's in their archives. You know, what's not normally on display. So that was kind of that alone was interested. So we started that process. I think the first one we went to was um, Leicester. We've started off by having all these fifteen objects, and we've kind of come down to these five. This one I don't think is uh, <laughs> colonial. This has probably got the most decorative and interesting parts to it, but we didn't go for it. We didn't go for it at all. Color. If you said it was, oh, this was done in 18 or, or 17 something, we would have grabbed it straight away. We yeah, said, oh, yeah. let's have that. That's, uh, yeah. that's really yeah. old without even thinking about it. Really, the material of it, because this is hair, that we decided that that really had to come into it. That kind of coarseness tells me that it's more from the from the northern. If it's Nigerian, would be northern Nigeria. But to think how this might be uh, presented, like you have the good side, which is, yeah, is done very well, that. and the good and then, side in yeah. the mid. In but here, there. the good side is inside. Mm. So would that mean that this would be mainly used like this? I thought the discussions you had over the right. back yeah. were really interesting. If we look at this in terms of the time it's made. This is, this is, look, the details. Yeah, yeah. Because I think European, net, net, the talent, the skill, the ability from mm. Africa and other mm. lesser places. So that for me is not a European. You know, it's hard to look past the fashion thing because we're used to having something like you this. You love this bag, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. because it's, it's the artwork. <laughs> and like I said, this is 1936, it's it's backwards. Yeah. In the old uh, Ghana and Songhai and Mali kingdoms. They were eh? trading empires. Uh, yeah, so they might have kept their money in it. If you say that that people get inspired by each other yeah, over, yeah, that course. is that is the standard kind of everywhere where yeah, you go. Course. Out of the 15 objects, we pick five from here, and then we're going to Northampton mm -hmm. and, and Derby, and then we'll have another five, and then we are doing all the research ourselves. So what was happening when they were made, and the areas that they came from, and whatsoever. It may be a ritual object where they had something in it, I don't know, but I feel like I'm familiar with it. A lot of the stuff from Asia and Africa is stolen. And to me, colonialism is a fancy word for slavery. So, therefore, I have a love-hate relationship with any museum that's showing my ancestors' stuff. Who took it and what pretense did they took it under? Was they allowed to take it? Did they just audaciously walk off with it? Like, that's, that's the part of it that fuels me as to why today European institutions are so full of our stuff. Like for example, the other day when Ethiopia says, oh, we want our stuff back. Mm. And then Europe is saying, okay, we'll lend you it. Mm. Yeah. We're, we've got an opportunity to set the record straight. If not us, our children. Mm. It, there's a lot of emotion involved because we know a lot of this stuff didn't come over this side of the water happily with people with big smiles on their faces. Taken traumatic. Yeah. What I would like to get out of this project is that we allow the objects mm -hmm. to bring the social history to life. The history is lost. So I never knew about this. 
Now you've come here and opened up my mind. I'm thinking, well, I want, I want my kids to see it. Yeah, yeah. Now we've got our stuff here. We live here. We need to see our stuff, our ancestors' stuff. Now I don't think we presented that argument to the system, but I figured that the energy that's beginning to emerge might just make them listen. Yeah. Black people, white people, Asian people, people are waking up and seeing through the game, man. Projects like these are more important than you might think right now. It might just look like a bunch of people come together to look at some stuff, but in the grand scheme of things, this is a very important moment. I love black history and it was really not getting facilitated, not, not being developed in the museum so I always wanted to link up directly with the museum so now I've got the chance with the help of the Heritage Lottery Fund. Well I just wanted to see what these museums have got behind locked doors. It was kind of surprising everybody did the same thing, kept their things in the basement in terms of African Caribbean artefacts. We wanted to get the collection out because it's been in storage for so long and so a lot of it dates back to the 1910s, 1920s, 30s. So a lot of it was donated by people who'd been out to empire. You know, it's an adventure for me um, to discover about my ancestors' use of shoes and um, the, the manner in which they made their crafts, the carving techniques, how rich it is and how long it's been there. It gives you a lot of respect for, for pre-colonial cultures. And that's what's exciting to me, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a page of history. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a it was quite difficult because yeah. in the selection process there were objects that I would have chosen that the group didn't. The one that I found interesting was the crocodile shield, though that wasn't the one that I had looked at, but that as a concept, that, that was mind-blowing. There were quite a few things that I thought were unusual and things that I've never seen before, like things made of elephant skin <laughs> and things like that, and very beautiful objects. The first thing I want to find out is what animal the tooth is from, where the animal's from. That might give you an idea of the, the, the culture that it came from and what it was used for. It's, it's the pure aesthetic appeal of the material. Mm -hmm. I'm, right here. In my flat, I've, this is the colour I've on my wall. I'm looking forward to finding that needle in the haystack. You know, one of the greatest challenges is trying to identify where these artefacts are from. You know, it's, it's been a, so far, a very arduous task trying to identify, um, you know, some of these objects and um, where they come from. Objects on it have come from Africa, but it would have been made for a stately home over here. Okay. So it kind of puts a cold different yeah, aspect yeah, on it. It's a pretty oh, typical story. Though, about exactly. You know what I mean? exactly. It depicts to me a European. Mm. Rather than, you know, so what is, is that, what is that saying? Right in the middle, bang in the middle, mm. everything else on the side of it, we've conquered, we've won. I don't know. I mean, there's so much, you know, I think so into that. Easy. Yes. I would be more interested in hearing stories in a social context. Mm. How they were used. How they were acquired is another interesting story, but yeah. Oh, what they were for exactly. Okay, so for the belt. So, can I say something? That was my drop off date, 1930s. I wasn't coming any further up than that, purely because I want to see the culture of the people that were there before um, and not just what we've been told. Mm. Um, to be able to do that own, our own research, to be able to do, make our own understandings, to be able to talk to our own people. By doing that, we have more of an understanding on what was happening to those people at that time. You know, before a European went over with a idea that this is what it should be, how it should be. It's empowering. I mean, just to see the artefacts, why they were used, how they were used. It's just amazing in terms of just, just the knowing it has the history. This art, this thing in my hand has history. The museums are shut at the moment. They're being renovated. So we get to just go through all the objects in the stores, which is amazing. And there's going to be some shocks. I know there was one piece in there that took my breath away. But the larger part of our collection is actually comes from Africa. It's got wide diversity in terms of the objects and styles. And one of the parts of coming over here is that they've asked that we pick one pair of shoes as one of the things that we, we, we research. Anything shoey, we collect. 
This run along here is all of our shoes in the shoe collection. Our earliest shoes in the collection are Egyptian. It, they believe it's between 1875 and 1900, so this one might be a good idea to have a look in. It's not just a history of the 19th century in, in doing the research because, um, for instance, um, if you're looking at shoes, um, you go back to when Africans first started wearing shoes, which is thousands of years ago. I love shoes, so I was very interested to see um, how it started with them and the creativity that whoever created that shoe. Probably Europeans learned about shoes from interacting with Africans, yeah, Egyptians and whatnot, yeah. so it, it's, it's empowering. That looks older than the last one, it doesn't look like it's been manufactured like the last one. <laughs> Where is that from? This is from Somalia. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. There's things that are similar to that yeah, in the shops similar. now. If you go to any museum across the country, you're going to see one of those. Yeah. Do, do you know what that is? No, I don't. Pillow. Basically, yeah, these were the first pillows. So, rather than having a pillow, pillow you, I have no idea. Oh, it says bamboo pipe. It says Cambodia. Okay, pipe. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a tobacco region. pouch mm -hmm. on the west coast of Africa. It's a symbol of marriage. Another cone. And another cone. I think this is lovely. I don't think that's part of a... There was a couple of like dagger type things and what looked like decorative uh, necklaces or maybe type of armour. I want to see everything that they've got. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that has kind of disappeared through time. Miraculously, information is kind of scarce. <laughs> I still don't think I can actually touch it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Just, I don't think I want to. Do you know what that is? Oh. It's a whip. It's a whip. It's a whip. I really don't want to touch it. I'm trying to take it out. Yeah. Oh, it's a Last century. All these objects also carry, you know, their own energy yeah. as well. So that's and this is obviously not. Um, and I think it was donated in 1920. Well, do you know anything more about the individual? Yeah, the one we have very little information about why that person chose to donate because in that time they weren't collecting the information why people were donating these kind of artifacts. A lot of the time, over the years they represented the person that brought it into the museum and not the object itself or where it came from. More so, I think what's really important about a lot of these artifacts is the journey they took to get here and why they came here. Personally, I want to see stuff that our ancestors could be used for more uh, social, whatever. Yes, we, we, know, we, we, we can know gather that for about that. But I want to Honestly, it doesn't, I don't feel nothing. Right, if it's close to the Everybody's trying to come here. We can be like this in the next 200 years. We can't face That's our history. Like it's so interesting that you, you, you see open person. I'm, I'm looking at the, the, the length of it. You know what I mean? I'm not seeing how long it is. How yeah. long it is in terms of, you know, the. Yeah, the, the reach, reach, the reach, the reach. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, you've got to be aware. The end of it is breaking the sound barrier. Yeah. That's how it's hard and how fast, yeah. and how it's, fast going. it's going. Wow. Yeah. And you think that somebody but, actually created this, you know, sat down. Exactly. It, it, it you know, look at that spike clip, it has included that in that, that section. That might, there's a chance a slave made it. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm There's a chance of that. Yeah, there's a chance when, of When you say maybe for what purpose would they make it? For their master? Yeah, they're forced to make it. They're forced to make it. Kind of um, airy in terms of, you know, because you know, you know, the history behind slavery and you knew you know it came from a certain mindset even with my knowledge of what's in in the stores that was a shock one, one of the byproducts of slavery was that um the first thing that was stolen from the african people besides their freedom um their their their, 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 their knowledge of themselves so basically they were forced to forgo their knowledge of their gods or their god for, to forgo their historical and cultural knowledge. Um, they were forced to learn a false image of where they had come from. And if you take a, pe uh, a people away from the knowledge of their past and the history, 
you make them like a tree without roots. And their, their mental state withers till eventually you have a lost generation of young people like we have today who don't have any knowledge of where they, where they come from. And this is basically what British museums represent, the loot of colonial misadventures. You know, not to detract from what these, what these items really revealed because these items were sitting with no identification. A lot of times in the bowels of these museums, never on display. So to bring these to life also allowed us to bring the history of these people that produce these items to life. You know, but it's an exciting, it's an exciting project. Hey, I've never been here before, so um, just coming here is going to be quite an eye-opening experience for me. So. It seems that everywhere we've been to, the buildings, the books, the people, we just have to do is absolutely wonderful. The actual research itself for the objects hasn't been that easy to find, but then that's what research is about. A lot of our stolen stuff inside there, I've got what I've been told over the years and stuff, but I want to, yeah, I expect to be surprised. I think it's going to be very emotional. I think we had a, a tour guide kind of thing from Black History, and to really tell us a little bit more about the old artifacts. It's nice to hear a black person's perspective on what's in the museum. It was nice to hear it from somebody who has been to Egypt and researched all the things that he was talking about. From an African perspective, and it brought the whole subject alive and to now be able to come downstairs with that kind of passion and motivation uh, with the resources that they have here and the help of these people here again i feel quite privileged actually and finding the books because that's been for me very hard to find um, the information that i needed for um, the item that I was looking at, this book here, and now I found out it is actually in Leicester. The librarian actually found what exactly my two objects are, where they're from. British Museum tour was really good, and I do I do think that a lot of the things in the Egyptian exhibition shouldn't be there. I don't think there should be dead bodies <laughs> taken away from their graves and put in a museum. And a lot of the things that have been stolen, I think they should give them back. You know, if we were to go into the Holocaust graveyards and to dig up the buries, the bodies of those victims of the Holocaust and put them on museum, museums to display, we would be condemned as being inhumane. But there's somehow a disconnect with humanity in Africa, European humanity in Africa because they don't see this as being an obscene thing. It's, it's been um, shocking in many ways, the amount of stuff that they actually do have here. And to know that they've actually got a basement which is about three miles long, with loads of more other stuff yeah. that's not even being touched yet. And to know that that only represents 1% of what they have. Literally. Going into the museum, going behind the scenes, um, and seeing there's a lot of things and still things that are hidden, they have got miles underneath the basement of artefacts and they love it, they, they don't know what it is. We're now going through a, a period of rethinking uh, our Africa galleries. So we acquired mm. for research purposes that we know some things are never going to go on display, <laughs> but they add to our knowledge of the collections as a whole. But don't just do it for the season. Do it as a as as a well, as, as, as a long term display. Because like sometimes we're really limited mm. in the word count yeah, that we yeah, have, definitely. and definitely. to get really complex information across mm. is. See, this um, is you know, you've I'm got the educational. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on the back of that, yeah. you've got all of that information that's readily available. Mm. That's not all going to yeah, fit yeah. on the next no, session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimately. What is gleaned from this project not only enables us to have knowledge of self, mm -hmm. it's fighting racism at its core. Mm -hmm. If they know where we came from, they can't tell us we're dumb and we're stupid and we can't be president or prime minister. For me, that's the ultimate goal of this project. I think going through the, the whole of this three days has been really interesting and really exciting to see how 
everybody has really got involved and really started to enjoy what they were looking and the, and the objects that they were finding. Then moving on to day two at the National Archives. You know, the British Museum was great, but they were just seeing books. When they actually saw written texts and documents, I think that it's, it just showed them something different. It's been quite surprising because sometimes I come to these places and I get quite angry at some of the things that I read, and, and nobody's really got angry, which is quite nice. They've, they've just took it as, let's just move forward, let's just find out more, and I think that's, that's quite interesting to watch as well. And seeing like them light up with the information that they've got, because they're all very articulate people very knowledgeable people but not academics uh, which you don't need to be but it's, they've, they've, they've loved it and that's that's the best part for me I've, that's what I've enjoyed. One of the things that this project has revealed to me is that Africa before colonialism was a very sophisticated cultured and educated source for knowledge in this planet. Just to have an artifact which is over 150 years old it's amazing which this belonged to, you know, somebody, you know, I mean, part of who you are. They're sitting down in the cellar. If it wasn't for this project, they'd die in the cellar. A lot of things have got lost, and a lot of things have been hidden and are in basements, and I think the children and the younger generation should see it. It did affect me, um, as in the fact, because there were still things that you think you know, um, and you don't really know. This is a phenomenal project. It's, it's phenomenal. It, it would really be nice to bring more of the hidden artifacts up and open to the public. Why are you hiding it? Why? Why don't you want us to see on and or no? These are items that you'd have to steal. Another way we could name this project is the Stolen Legacy. I hope it doesn't just be a one-off and that there are many other artifacts out there in, in museums across Britain that we need to look at. And you know, maybe we could get them to sh they prick their conscience to make them give back the stolen legacy that is ours as a people. <laughs>